Okay guys, it is Flashback Friday and you know what that means. Today we're going to talk about a particular year in history. It was suggested to me that 1942 is just as good a year as any. So that's the year we're going to talk about. And um, before I get started with that, I am going to go over at the end of the video some of the stuff that I sold, some of the stuff that I have bought, um, and most of it's listed already. Are you staying on top of your death piles? Because I certainly am trying to stay on top of mine. Um, and um, But I'll show you all those stuff in a separate segment at the end. So let's just jump right into 1942. Franklin Roosevelt was the president, and we were being forced into the World War II, which President Roosevelt had tried to avoid, but after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, um, December 7th, 1941, we were kind of pushed into it. They drew first blood, okay? Anyway, um, so we jump into the war and the draft is reduced, the draft age is reduced from 21 to 18. And there's a major, major push um, by the government for Americans to buy war bonds that have newly been introduced. This is a new thing. And the citizens of this great country deep, reached deep down into their pockets and they pulled out $13 billion to help support this war, and we'd need every penny. Um, some American citizens were less appreciated than others in this um, unfortunate war, and um, about 120,000 Japanese Americans were forced into internment camps during World War II. Um, we should have known better. I can't believe that we did that. It's never been our, our best moment or our best interests when we have forced people into tight living quarters. I have reservations about saying more than that. Cost of living in 1942, you could average, uh, buy an average house for about $3,770. Average wages per year was $1,880. Your average rent for a month was $35. You could buy a bottle of Coca-Cola for five cents the average price for a new car was $920, and it uh, the gas cost of gasoline was $0.15, cents, but you were rushing to just three, to, three gallons a week in 1942, so you better stay close to home. The worst nightclub fire in the history of the United States occurred in Boston at the Coconut Grove nightclub, unfortunately killing 492 people. But I don't want to talk about negative stuff because there was a lot of negative stuff that happened in 1942 and, and throughout the, the war years. Let's talk about some happy stuff. It's the year of Bambi and Miss Miniver and Road to Morocco starring Bob Hope and the movie Yankee Doodle Dandy. And that's pretty awesome. It's also the year of Casablanca who has the best line, best last line of a movie ever. And if you don't know what it is, you need to go watch. Casablanca co-starred Humphrey Bogart, Claude Rains, Peter Lorre, and Ingrid Bergman. Ooh, now she's low maintenance. There are two types of women, low maintenance and high maintenance. Ingrid Bergman was low maintenance. I'm the worst kind. I'm high maintenance, but I think I'm low maintenance. In 1942, the number one song was White Christmas, but wait, you say, White Christmas didn't come out until 1954. You're right, but White Christmas the Song by Bing Crosby appeared first in the movie Holiday Inn, which made its debut this year. Normally, I talk about people that die in this year. However, since 1942 was quite a while back, and since I didn't really recognize any of the folks that had passed away, I thought we'd talk about people that were born. There were lots of remarkable people that were born in 1942, including my mother. Without her, I wouldn't be here. But let's go through the list. Judge Judy was born this year, Linda Evans, former Vice President Joe Biden, Jimi Hendrix, Harrison Ford, yes ladies, he is that old, Michael Bloomberg, Billy Connolly, and if you don't know off the top of your head who Billy Connolly is, he is a Scottish comedian and he was in lots of lots of things, but like Boondock Saints is one of the things that he was in. Um, Britt Eklund, who had, her career was a lot more um, viable, I would say, in the 1980s. John Wayne Gacy, if you remember, was that um, serial killer. 
Jerry Garcia from The Grateful Dead, Stephen Hawking, Hawking, Stephen Hawking, Bob Hoskins, and uh, Bob Hoskins is one of, in one of my favorite movies ever, um, Hook, starring Robin Williams and Dustin Hoffman, and Bob Hoskins plays Smee. Smee is me. I love that. Brian Jones and Al Jardin from The Beach Boys was born this, were born this year. Also Calvin Klein and Paul McCartney. Charlie Rose was born this year. Martin Scorsese, Barbara Streisand, Tammy Wynette, Muhammad Ali, Graham Nash, Roger Staubach. I remember his commercials, but I don't remember what they were for. He was a former footballer, but I don't know. I don't remember what his commercials were. Maybe in the 80s and 90s. I don't remember. Carol King, Peter Tork, and Michael Nesmith from The Monkees were both born this year. Um, Mitch McConnell, who is currently um, a the uh, Republican Center from Kentucky, my home state, and he's also the Senate Majority Leader at this time. Uh, Bobby Rydell. Do you remember Bobby Rydell? Whoa, Laurie. Whoa. Um, let's see. Taj Mahal, who is also a mu musician. Lou Reed. Aretha Franklin. Michael York. Some of you remember him from movies as recent as Austin Powers. Some of us older folks rem remember him, I believe, from Cabaret was one of the movies that he was in. But he was in so many. He was in so many movies. Um, Leon Russell, Barry Levinson, Sandra D, Roger Ebert, and Garrison Keillor, both born this year. Captain Daryl Dragon was, was born this year. And if you don't know who that is, that is not Captain Jack Sparrow's cousin. He is actually half of Captain and Tennille. Without him, we could not say do that to me one more time. Also, Werner Herzog, who makes excellent documentaries. If you've never seen one of his documentaries, you have to watch it. Um, have to watch one. Frankie Lyman, Ian McShane, and if you don't know who he is, Google him because he's an amazing actor. Um, I think he was in Deadwood. I'm not sure. And maybe one of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, um, but he's an excellent actor. Uh, David Ogden Stiers, who you might know as Charles Emerson uh, Winchester III from MASH. Um, Bob Ross with his happy little trees and his happy little squirrels. And Larry Flint with his happy little girls that like to take off their clothes for pictures. Um, Marsha Wallace, who um, was a receptionist uh, from the Bob Newhart show. She was Carol. So when they got off the elevator, when Bob got to his office, she was right there. And she always had something snappy, some snappy comeback to say. She was also the voice of Edna Krabappel from The Simpsons. She has um, unfortunately passed away, um, as have many of the people on this list. Um, and also Earl Hindman. And I know that name will sound familiar to you. You will recognize this much of him because Earl Hinman was um, Wilson on Home Improvement and he was always hidden by the fence or a bush or a shovel or something. So those are all the wonderful people that were born in 1942. Now, I'm gonna get some stuff together so I can show you all of the things that I sold and all of the things that I bought because what's a haul video without that? You stick around. Okay, let's jump into just a few things that have sold over the last couple of days. Um, not a whole lot, but at least some decent sales. This is um, some of the littlest pet shop that um, I got in that $65 lot. I may not have gotten this play set, but I usually pick them up for a dollar or two at thrift stores. Um, this took a little while to sell, but it sold for $26.99, and actually um, they paid about $14 and change for shipping. So um, this went out this morning. This um, was a, a, a um, an item that I had returned from Amazon. I just had my stock pulled back. And I sold this for $16.99 with free ship. It cost about $6 to ship it, so I did make a couple of bucks on this. Whereas if I had just had it dumped at um, Amazon or paid fees to have it remain at Amazon, I may not have made as much. So that was that. This is the second one of these I've sold this week. Um, I bought this for 35 cents. Um, it is the long black uh, George Foreman tray. 
And um, again, I paid 35 cents for it and it sold for $12.99 with free ship. So I'll make seven or eight dollars on um, these after fees. And um, I just listed these early this week and I've sold both of them already. This is a lot of Sakura mugs. It's a set of mugs and um, really kind of cool graphics on these. I had these for a very, very long time, probably at least six months. Um, I paid $3 for them. Um, I kept lowering the price and lowering the price, and finally they did tell, sell for $17.97 plus shipping, and the shipping was a little bit more than this. This is showing what the shipping would be from me to me, actually. So, um, and then my best sale of the week was this new with tags first responder bag that I bought at Goodwill for $7.99, I think. And um, this was actually on sale. It sold for $197 plus about $25 shipping. And um, it did take this some time to sell. And um, I had a lot of interest in this bag from one person that just wouldn't stop contacting me and when I uh, and kind of harassing me over wanting me to take this bag for a cheaper price. And um, I blocked one ID and they they contacted me from another. And um, in, in, I, I don't think it's that person that bought this. Um, I hope it's not that person that bought this. But anyway, um, yeah, it sold for $197 plus uh, $25 shipping. And I probably had this for, I'd say, a good three months, two, three months. Um, so pretty good return on that $7.50 in um, investment. Let me get some stuff together, and I will show you guys what I bought yesterday on my ship, um, my buying journey. Okay, so I had to take the backdrop down because I need a little room to move up in here. Um, and I thank you all for all of the nice comments that you put on my last video about the makeup and all of that. So the story is, the day before I made that video, I had to go and get my um, driver's license picture done. And I actually had been putting that off because I hate to wear makeup. It's such a chore. But um, I finally did it, and I went and got my driver's license photo made. And my husband, like, loved it so much, and he was fussing about it, and he, you know, appreciated it so much. And um, so I felt compelled to do it again the next day. And uh, I made the video wearing the makeup. But thank you so much. I appreciate the fact that I look like crap the rest of the time. But, um, you know, don't expect that too often. Although, he did buy me a brand new iPhone today because I had a little issue with my other one. And um, I may have to put some makeup on again today. But anyway, let's talk about what I bought. So, one of the things that I got was this little Ronco, this is a com compact rotisserie, and um, this one's in re really good condition. And it even comes with like the heat gloves so you can take the rotisserie out of the oven. These sell for about $12 by themselves. Um, it's got the string to truss up the chicken, the basket, um, and all of the other goodness, you know, the grease rack and the actual spit that the chicken goes on. And um, this is not new, it's been used. And to test it, I'm gonna roast a chicken tonight because um, I just happen to have one in my fridge. Um, now I have two choices with this and I get, I get torn sometimes uh, with working units. I can sell it like it is and I probably will get 25 to $30 for it. Um, I, I paid six dollars for it or I can part it out and I'll make a lot more money um, by doing that I mean the door's worth about twenty dollars I think on its own uh, I've sold the knob like those the little control knob I've sold that before um, so I can actually part this out and make more uh, which I may do I don't know but then I hate to have that part that's left over which is like the main unit that really just isn't just isn't worth anything um, unless I sell it as the motor and someone else who has one that has died can take their parts off and put it on this one so I may do that as well but 
just so I can make sure everything's in good working order, I'm gonna roast a chicken tonight. I don't understand the psychology about why I hate to part out something like that, but I bought this old Hamilton Beach food processor for five bucks. I got no problem parting this. I don't understand it, but I will try to um, sell as many of the parts as I possibly can like um, the little pusher here, the blades, um, the top, the um, bowl, this blade, and I probably will go as far as to try and sell just the unit itself. Um, I also have the instructions. So um, I'm gonna park this out and sell as many of the pieces as I can. Again, your return is not as much per item, per part, um, and it takes longer, but I, you know, I've made $25 on like the two blades out of a blender before. So there, this can be kind of lucrative, so look into it. But yeah, I'm gonna part, part that bad boy out and I don't feel bad about it and I can't explain it. It does not make any sense. Want to see my sentimental buy of this week? Because you know I'm going to have one. Because I don't know how to not buy stuff I'm sentimental about. I And it tends to, I tend to be sentimental about a lot, unfortunately. It's these. Do you remember these? You know, you go to the fair. They're floating in the water. And, you know, you give the guy the dollar or whatever, and you pick the one that's got the star, and you win the prize. Well, I don't know why, but um, there's about 30 of these. I'm going to see if I can get, um, there's actually these two. I, I bought these all in a big bag for five bucks. I'm going to see if I can get 30 bucks for all of them. 25, 30 for all of those. I bought this Bop It for... $1.50. I've got this listed for $18 right now. Um, you know, let's talk about Beanie Babies for a second, because I've sold these before. Um, and I don't sell Beanie Babies. I don't like Beanie Babies. I don't care about Beanie Babies. It's just not my thing. I've never been one of those girls that had stuffies on their bed or any of that. I've just not been that girl, and I'm still not that girl. But I will buy thing, peripheral things that are valuable, that have some worth. So see these? I've sold these before when I when I found big enough lots. So I found this um, display box with, it's got 29 of the um, tag covers in it. I paid $2 for this. I have this listed for 18 bucks. This is damaged. It does have a crack right in the middle. I've disclosed it. And quite frankly, if they don't want the box, I probably, and I may end up marking these down a little bit and tossing the box out because they'll ship first class without it. So, um, but I do have these listed for 18 bucks right now. This is a Black & Decker Space Maker um, can opener and bag opener. So this is... Um, you know, useful in small kitchens, especially for people that cook a lot. It's nice to have an, um, an electric can opener. Handy dandy. Um, it's got the mounting bracket. I paid $1 for this. I have this listed for $34.99. I've got this listed for $34.99. $1 investment. If I get to hit them all like that, I would. Um, I paid $2 each for these Leap Frog tag reading system uh, books. So there's uh, six books in one and seven books in the other. I paid $2 each, so a $4 investment. I have these listed for $39.99. I didn't know they were worth that much, but I looked them up while I was at the store. And um, I did buy one other nostalgic kind of thingy. I'll admit. Uh, it was this, it's a DuckTales um, duffel bag. I think I can get about $15 for it. I paid $1.25 for this. It's got Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Scrooge McDuck on it. You know, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't pass it up. I should have passed it up, but I, but I couldn't. And then the last thing that I bought for resale is this cool, 
um, re, real tone AM FM digital clock radio, which is not digital at all. Maybe the clock, the radio part is digital, but look, this has the dial like an odometer and this is new in box. It's got the original sale pr uh, sticker price on it of $27 and it went on sale for $22.99. So really a cool piece. I didn't find any like this that had sold, but I listed this for $39.99. I paid two bucks. So that's what I have. Um, how are you doing on your on your July goal? Where are you? You know, the month is getting short. One other thing that I bought, which was a personal item, but I want to show you because it's really pretty, are these pretty um, candlesticks. They are terracotta glazed, and there's a pair of them. I got these for two bucks. And they had this matching cool metal plate for two dollars and fifty cents. So I bought that for my daughter who's moving into a house this week and um, you know might need some home decor. Oh pardon me. One more thing. I bought this um, lithium. It's a black and decker lithium 20 volt charger for batteries and uh, I paid three bucks for it. I have this listed for 20 bucks. I don't know how it got over there. But yeah, that's what I bought. So, um, you know, if you're not meeting your goals, get busy listing or get busy buying. You know, you've got to do one of the one or the other and both um, to get there. But, but I'd like to hear how you're doing because for those of you that posted in the Facebook group in response to my challenge of, you know, where you, what, what are you setting your goal for Jul July? I'll be checking up on you in just about 10 days to see where you are. Um, I hit my goal of 600 listings. I'm working towards 650 as my new goal. And let's see if I get there. Until then, just remember that the dream works when you do. So keep dreaming and keep working and I'll see you the next time.